All right, and welcome back. And today uh, we're going to answer a question regarding sleep apnea and the diagnosis of obstructive sleep apnea. I had a question submitted by Michael. Um, it says, hi T-Bone, it was a pleasure hearing you speak and learning from you at my Galileo's training in San Diego last November. Uh, you went off on a tangent, which quite honestly is not unusual, and started talking about treating sleep apnea. You mentioned that you don't refer your patients directly over to the MD anymore to get a sleep study done because they never return to you. So what are you doing to keep the patient in your office to do the oral appliance and still get a diagnosis from the MD? <clears throat> So uh, let's talk about that. And uh, maybe I miscommunicated a little bit on that. Um, so, and I want to clarify. I don't think I miscommunicated, but I want to clarify on this. Uh, first and foremost, the diagnosis of obstructive sleep apnea, OSA, can only be done by a physician. As a dentist, we are not able to make this type of diagnosis. No cone beam, no Epworth sleep test, no stop bang, nothing will make a dentist be able to create that diagnosis. Now, next is that the diagnosis of OSA must come from either an in-lab polysomnogram PSG sleep study or an at-home HST home sleep test. Now, again, those two uh, devices can be used and then the diagnosis, again, with the scoring and the reading and the interpretation being done by the physician, can then make the official diagnosis of obstructive sleep apnea. Now, based on the diagnosis, based on your personal philosophy, then you can decide how you would like to treat uh, sleep that, that person with sleep, obstructive sleep apnea. So, now, let me kind of clarify how I'm doing it in our practice. First and foremost, we firmly believe in co-coordinating care. In other words, we like to work very closely with our patient's physicians. That being said, I don't allow the physicians to stand in my way. Now, typically what I'm referring to is the primary care, the cardiologist, not that they, they absolutely they know what they're doing, but more about, it's about the patient and it's about barriers to the patient. So we, in the state of North Carolina, where I live in practice, are allowed to own home sleep testing devices and we are allowed to order a home sleep testing test to be done. So again, I can order the test, I can dispense the test, I cannot read the test because that is outside the scope of my license. So we, what we're doing in our practice is we're helping patients get screened and, and helping them get tested for the presence of obstructive sleep apnea and then working with either a local sleep physician or a remote sleep physician to do the scoring and to do the official diagnosis from that home sleep testing. Now, we again co-coordinate care. We always let our physicians know the primary care when we know the primary care, the sleep physician, uh, so that way we can co-coordinate care that so that the doctor knows what treatment is going on for the patient. Um, that also being said, when we get home sleep test results that come back and we're not comfortable with the results, we're not comfortable with treating that patient for an appliance right away, we work closely with our physicians in the community, specifically a neurologist or a sleep physician, to allow us to get, uh, you know, to get the patient to the right place, to make sure that a CPAP isn't the best choice, or to make sure that there isn't signs of central sleep apnea, to make sure that there aren't other conditions. We also even work with a local group of psychiatrists as well for uh, other areas in terms of sleep, because sometimes sleep is not just about the lack of breathing, certainly that's a big component, but there's also insomnia, there's anxiety, there's so many different things as you more and more explore sleep that come into this. So we believe in, uh, again, in the state of North Carolina, we're allowed to own home sleep testing appliances. We do dispense these to a patient. Uh, we do uh, help them in getting the test. And then we do work with either a local physician community or remote physician services to read, interpret, score, and properly diagnose our patients. And then from there, depending on the results from that, from that physician, if oral appliance is first line of defense, we'll provide oral appliance therapy. If oral appliance is not the first line of defense or they recommend a more comprehensive in-lab PSG, we will then work with the in-lab PSG. 
An area that we have found difficulty in is what I call the all-in-one treatment sleep centers. And that's where they sell and service the CPAP machines. That's where I think most dentists are finding um, that our trouble is when our patients go into that service route that they sometimes don't or very often don't return because they're getting in the CPAP right away and then we never hear communication back uh, and we know that 60% of those patients fail CPAP and it may not be for six months or a year before we have the patient back and then you can even ask them again if they're using the CPAP or you know again things get in the way you just kind of forget what's going on there. So I like to quarterback care, I like to certainly co-coordinate care, and I like to work with our local physician community. So I do apologize if I did not make that clear or if I misled anybody that we are um, uh, circumventing the physician community. Uh, that is not the case. Uh, we need the physician community to attain the diagnosis. We're just uh, uh, using uh, home sleep testing uh, devices through the office to help screen patients and help patients make it easy for them to get tested. Um, and I would encourage you to do so, but do check with your state laws. Uh, some states, for example, do not allow dentists to own these machines, do not allow dentists to prescribe these machines. Uh, so, so do check with that. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. If you have questions that you would like answered, please don't hesitate. As you can see on the bottom left of your screen, just visit www.tbonespeaks.com dot com and uh, we'll be happy to answer your questions and if I may I'd love to put in a plug for our wonderful hands-on workshops on sleep apnea if you're looking to get into sleep apnea and need some additional training and you want to focus on getting a good implementable workflow that works in your practice please do consider coming out to Raleigh for a hands-on program uh, I do think that we do a wonderful job of um, uh, giving you some wonderful uh, actionable education thank you very much